Marty. Google, this is Houston. Please call Endeavor and ISS for a voice check. Let's uh, do what we've got to do, which is say hello to them. And so uh, what I do is this. I say, Endeavor ISS, this is Miles O'Brien with Google. How do you hear me? Miles, we have you loud and clear. How do you hear us? Uh, five by five, Commander Mark Kelly. Good to see you guys. You look hale and hearty. Congratulations on installing the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. That's great news. Uh, I wanted to, before we get to the questions from folks, there wasn't a lot of time for folks on Google Moderator to weigh in on the tile damage. I'm curious um, what your thoughts are on what you've seen. How concerned are you about these uh, ding tiles on uh, the belly of the shuttle? Yeah, so uh, we took a look this morning at some of the photos and the message traffic that came up. There's three areas that, you know, are a little bit of concern. The team on the ground will decide over the next couple of days if we have to take a closer look at it. But uh, the current damage doesn't seem, I mean, we've seen this kind of stuff before, and it's uh, not too big of a concern for us. All right, good, good. Without further ado, let's get to some of our questions. Uh, folks on Google Moderator weighed in with a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of good questions. And the first one is a video question that comes from Spencer Kelly. I think uh, no relation, uh, in Miramichi, Canada. Let's roll it. Hi, Commander Kelly. I am Spencer Kelly, but I don't think we're related. I live in Miramichi, Canada. I was wondering, after four times going to space, what do you look forward to most in going to space? Hey, hi, Spencer. Hey, Mark, um, I don't know. Could you hear it? We have an honorary Canadian on board next to me. Yeah, we heard, we heard the question, Miles. Uh, after four times in flight, okay. what do I look forward to the most? Well, you know, the, these missions are very, very challenging and very rewarding. There's a lot to do. I, you know, I particularly like looking at the Earth and the small amount of chance we get, but also f Flying through the space station is a, an awful lot of fun. So, the, you know, those two things are high on my list. All right. Let's uh, go to question number two. This one is a text question, actually a couple of questions uh, for you, Mark. Uh, one of them comes from Watertown, New York. The first one, uh, an observation from an old Marine to an old sailor. I don't know if you like the old part, but he's a sailor for sure. Come back safely. What's in store for our space program remains to be seen. It will be exciting, but not as exciting as seeing Gabby back on her feet at full throttle. And then this one from St. Mary's, Ohio. Uh, this one is, uh, <laughs> it, he says, Mr. Gifford, it is difficult, is it difficult leaving your wife even though she's doing well? I think she would want to be where you are now. God bless you and your wife and the whole crew. And, Mark, I'll just button it up with, I, I know Gabby had surgery yesterday. Uh, I assume you've had some updates. Uh, how are things going? Well, I had the chance at the end of the day to call her mom and her chief of staff and my brother periodically through the, uh, as the surgery was going on, and she's doing really well. Everything went as planned. Her neurosurgeons are, are very happy. She's recuperating, and she's actually getting back to therapy today. So it, uh, it went, went really, really well. Now, of course, Gabby was at the launch. I understand you're carrying uh, her wedding ring with you. I don't, do you have it on you? And also, I, I'm just curious. In the, I know you have a busy day up there. Oh, you have it. Let's see it. It's great. Right around your desk. It's right there. In, in, the course of your, in the course of your busy day, uh, obviously you, you have a lot to think about up there. Uh, your thoughts must go to her as well. Yeah, obviously this has been a long road since uh, January 8th for us. It, um, yeah, ha her having surgery uh, yesterday was not planned all along but she was ready and the doctors you know wanted wanted to do it then and didn't make sense to wait a couple of weeks until I got back uh, so I've been thinking a little bit a little bit about that but it uh, it's it's pretty common surgery and it went really well uh, she was really excited to be at the launch really enjoyed it a lot she was there with uh, not only my kids but all the children and spouses 
of the rest of the crew, and they really had a great time despite the fact that we uh, w went through uh, some clouds there in about 20 seconds. Yeah, I think it was about, about 20 seconds after launch you guys disappeared. Uh, I tell you what, pass the mic over to Ron Guerin. Ron, uh, who is uh, a space station keeper and uh, has uh, spent a little bit of time up there, you tweeted um, a photo uh, of the Mississippi River the other day, and NASA has been sending images as well. What's it like to see uh, the devastation of that flooding from space? Well, Miles, that's, that's an interesting question because, you know, we, ha we do have this sense of isolation being up here, you know, be, you know, living off the planet. But at the same time, you know, even though we have this sense of isolation, we have, we have the ability to be more connected with things on the ground because we fly over it all the time. So, you know, watching, you know, the Mississippi River flooding on the news and then flying over it are two different things and seeing with our own eyes the, uh, you know, the devastation and, and the, uh, and the tragedy that's going on in that area of the of the country, uh, you know, is really something, and we feel a responsibility to try and document that as best we can, as as time allows, and take as many pictures of that area as we can. All right, our next question is a video question. It's aimed at uh, Mike Fink. So while we're playing it, why don't you send the microphone over to Mike and let's listen. This one comes from Wilmington, North Carolina, from Callie Davis and Anderson Branch. I'm Callie Davis. I'm Anderson Grant. And we're from Wilmington, North Carolina, and we were wondering what's the hardest thing about being in space. The hardest thing about being in space. Hello from uh, the International Space Station. Got your question, and uh, Callie and Anderson, my favorite thing about being in space is flying, and yesterday we opened up the hatch to the International Space Station, and I could really stretch my legs and fly from one end to the other, and we have a beautiful space station. I also uh, really like looking at our beautiful planet. Uh, it's the most beautiful planet in the whole solar system. All right. Uh, we, um, we, we had promised to see... Um Greg Chamatoff and Greg Johnson, obviously they're busy doing other things. Andrew Feustel is there. Why don't you pass the microphone to him? Uh, and for viewers out there, Andrew um, flew, uh, we got, is he going to bring him in? You going to bring him in now? Uh, Drew uh, was on the last servicing mission to the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, performed a series of spacewalks out there, has some more spacewalking duties ahead. And here's a question for you, Drew. Uh, oh, hey, we're, get, we're getting a, a late ad here. Ah, there, there's Box. Greg Johnson comes in. You know, the pilot never gets enough respect. I'm glad you did that. That was a good move. Uh, Drew Feustel, uh, this one um, from the, the Grinning Man from uh, YouTube. The question is, how realistic is Obama's promise to visit the planet Mars by 2030? Do you believe it is possible to do it sooner? Hey, hi Miles. How you doing? Thanks for the uh, thanks for the question. And um, it's sort of a bigger question, I think, to answer is uh, y you know what direction we're going. And I think we're all, as space explorers, interested in uh, eventually getting onto Mars and uh, also visiting the Moon, since that's our nearest neighbor. Uh, in my vision, can we do it sooner? I think we can. And uh, hopefully, with the progress we're making with the uh, commercial launch vehicles and what NASA's doing for heavy lift, and with the intent, as long as you know we have the intent to make it onto uh, to Mars eventually, uh, you know, we will get there as humans. I don't think we'll ever stop exploring. And uh, we're all excited to be a part of the, uh, the great adventure, really all starting right here on the International Space Station. Well, a lot of people who know a little bit about space would tell you the hurdles are not technological, they're more political, right? Well, certainly, Miles, that's, uh, that's one way to look at it. And there are a lot of challenges that we have ahead. Uh, of course, one of the great things, as I mentioned, about the space station is that it's international. And, and I think uh, all of us uh, support the notion of international cooperation for you know, longer-term space exploration, uh, not only to the moon, but eventually onto Mars. All right, pass it over to the pilot, Greg Johnson. Box, uh, question for you. This one comes uh, from Hanging with Joe from San Francisco. Uh, at what point during the mission does it sink in that you are one of, only the few, one of the only few people on Earth to have been able to see Earth from space? Just like any other mode of transportation, 
need to turn your mic on, Fox. Turn your mic on. Turn the mic on. Sorry about that. As a late ad, I guess I didn't get the brief. all the time. No worries. Um, no worries. <laughs> yeah. As a point of order, order both uh, Taz and I were not... Uh, uh, we, we, we were not AWOL. We were actually uh, just finishing up with the AMS install. But to answer your question, um, I think that uh, any mode of transportation like cars and airplanes uh, progress along. And in space, there's been almost 500 people that have looked at the Earth from uh, space. And I think uh, in a few decades, there will be uh, many, many uh, multitudes of more people that get to uh, see the Earth from space. But I can tell you it's a great honor, and uh, I cherish every moment.